Since when were there so many unemployed people in Beijing? Recently, Chinese social media platforms have been flooded with videos of migrant workers in Beijing being laid off. Some of them had to go back to their hometowns to look for work, while others continue to hide in major libraries in Beijing and submit their resumes. What's more, people spend money on Xiao Hongshu to buy jobs. If the employment situation in China's capital is like this, what about migrant workers in second and third tier cities? This is a programmer from a major internet company. He is 35 years old. After 11 years of hard work in Beijing, he was unable to escape the recession and was laid off. He said, "I used to have a monthly salary of more than 50,000 yuan. In March 2023, because I could not withstand the pressure and because of my health, I resigned from a large factory and came to a startup. Unexpectedly, in less than a year, all employees were laid off." The original team of more than 30 people was reduced to only four or five people to maintain the old project. In fact, we had a premonition before the Chinese New Year. Due to the general environment, the company originally planned to prepare a self-developed project, but the company decided to purchase from outside to reduce costs. On the second day after work started, HR started to talk to each of us. February 29th was the last day to negotiate compensation with HR. My wife is currently more than eight months pregnant, and responsibilities are increasing. Pressure is everywhere. Although I was mentally prepared some time ago, when the layoffs happened, I felt the pressure doubled. I recently contacted my former colleagues. Either the company has no recruitment quota, or programmers are required to be under 35 years old. Has the road of being a programmer really come to an end? In my ninth year of living in Beijing, I lost my job. Today is March fourth, two thousand twenty-four, and it has been two months and four days since I lost my job. Why do I remember it so clearly? Probably because I suffered from anxiety every day for these last two months and four days. It is said that the age of thirty-five is the midlife crisis for people today. Unexpectedly, I experienced it in advance at the age of twenty-one. In the past two months, I tried to start over, continued to work on iOS software. Where and do questions to understand each algorithm. I also studied a full set of product manager courses from a training institution, and reviewed interview questions and algorithms for programmers to find jobs. However, when it came to actually applying for a job and submitting a resume, it had no effect. Among the thousands of companies I communicated with, there was almost no response. This is the longest job search I have experienced since graduation, and it is also the most anxious one. The main reason is that there are. Really, no opportunities in the current environment. I also talked to friends and family, and they all felt helpless about the situation. This blogger is called Salty Fish Dreamer, and he is an internet celebrity with nearly 300,000 fans on Douyin. In 2024, Dreamer became one of the unemployed people living in Beijing. He wanted to find a job at a supermarket near his home. Unexpectedly, cleaning jobs were also very difficult to find. He lives in Changping District, Beijing. When he came to the Wanda Plaza near his home, he saw that all the businesses on the first floor of the mall were open, but there was no one there. There is a supermarket on the underground floor, but it is even more deserted. Dreamer couldn't help but lament the state of shopping malls. The supermarket is not hiring at all, not even cleaning staff. He cooked himself a bag of dumplings. As he ate, he said, "It seems that the plan to work in Wu Mart supermarket will not be fulfilled." The Wu Mart supermarket in Shiguan Changping is not recruiting people, let alone the Wanda Wu Mart that got this one today. The employees there are very idle, and there are not many customers, so I'll look for work elsewhere. Beijing Drifter Pony is also a short video blogger. He found himself unemployed on Christmas Eve, 2023. He said that he was interviewed by HR on November 20th and was told that the existing positions in the company were no longer available. He tried to talk to HR several times, but without any progress. Finally, he signed the termination contract. On December 21st, he went to the company to hand over his work and return his work badge. I couldn't log into the company system when I got home at night. I felt so overwhelmed at the time. After all, I had been working in this company for six years. In October 2015, I came to Beijing from my hometown to do programming work and have been working as a programmer. The embarrassing thing now is that I'm 35 years old, which is the job crisis faced by programmers and all middle-aged people. I don't know what to do now, and there will be a lot of discomfort if I change the track. 
His wife suggested setting up a street stall, so he bought a set of equipment to sell roasted sweet potatoes. He lives in Changping, Beijing, where there is a lot of traffic, and he hopes to have good business. This woman talked about what she saw when she went to a Beijing library. She said that she hadn't been to the library for a long time, but she didn't expect it to be crowded at noon. She chatted for a while with a man. He said that he delivered food at night. He had been unemployed for a year, but didn't dare tell his family. He works odd jobs so he can send home the usual amount. Later, she went to talk to the man at the door for a while. The man said there were a lot of people like this now. They come around 9 a.m. every day and leave around 5:30 p.m. carrying a thermos. They might answer more than 10 calls a day, and sometimes after answering the phone, they come back with a sad face. Usually, it's an unemployed middle-aged man. Pretending to be at work and libraries crowded with middle-aged people were the hot topics on Weibo in 2023. After the Chinese New Year holiday in 2024, the library was full again. In an environment where China's overall unemployment rate is rising, young people who have been laid off or face employment pressure choose to stay in the library. Some of them escape into books. Some work on their resumes and submit job applications. Some simply become freelancers and use the library as their office. Others prepare to take the public entrance exam. Some even continue to prepare for the exam even after they failed it. For them, the library is a transitional sanctuary from anxiety. At first, they thought they would stay for a month or two, but later it became longer—five to six months, or even a year. People come and go. Some people get good job opportunities and leave. Some people haven't gotten their break yet and continue to work hard here. Mo Li, age 40, graduated from Beijing University of Civil Engineering and Architecture, majoring in surveying and mapping engineering. She is a native of Beijing. In the eyes of outsiders, Beijingers seem to have it easy because they already have a place to live in the city. But in Mo Li's view, being a Beijing native has no advantage. She told Pengbai News that after being laid off in February 2023, she began to go to the library frequently, staying there three or four days a week. She was just reading without any thought of doing research, so she felt relaxed. She feels that in the current economic environment, what will happen even if she gets ten certificates? After graduating from university, Molly did not work in her industry, but entered the IT industry. At first, she worked for a top multinational technology company for a period of time, and then went to work for a well-known foreign company in information security for five or six years. Because the foreign company withdrew from the Chinese market, she was laid off. It was the first time in her life that she had been laid off. Over the past few years, she has changed jobs four or five times, experiencing three rounds of layoffs. Her last job was in channel management. She joined the company in April 2022, mainly responsible for formulating channel policies, developing agents to represent the company's software products, and promoting them among customers. She made 25,000 yuan a month. Before the Chinese New Year on January 18, 2023, she received an email about a company restructuring, and the entire department was disbanded. She sensed the looming crisis even before the layoffs began. With the arrival of a new general manager and the layoffs of fresh graduates, followed by downsizing the sales team, she felt she could be let go at any time. Her department head reassured her that everything was fine as long as she did her job well. Due to this assurance, she turned down other job opportunities. However, her department head was the first to go, and Mo Li couldn't escape the wave of layoffs. In the end, she received over sixty thousand yuan in severance. On her last day, as she walked out of the building, she noticed that the only people she could say goodbye to were the cleaning lady and the security guard. She told the security guard that she wouldn't be coming in the next day. At first, he seemed surprised, but he quickly regained his composure, saying that many others were also not returning. If that foreign company hadn't exited China, she might have stayed there. After 2018, things became quite turbulent for Mo Li, with job changes every two or three years, either due to company closures, layoffs, internal conflicts, or salary adjustments. Around the Chinese New Year in 2023, Mo Li began searching for a new job, but found no luck for over a month. Eventually, she realized that she had to lower her expectations and take on jobs that young people usually avoid, reducing her expected salary to 10,000 yuan. She paid for a membership on online recruitment platforms, but found little success, as most of her applications were either read and ignored, or the position was already filled. 
Then she found a company she really wanted to work for. The interview process went smoothly, and she even passed the second round. But the company kept delaying the job offer and eventually said that they were not hiring anymore. Another time, interviewing with a company that made aromatherapy machines, the manager seemed nervous when he asked if she would accept a basic salary of six thousand yuan. Molly readily agreed, but she was also anxious inside. Molly reminisces about a movie she watched in her childhood called *The Stingy Family*, where a character played by Eric Sang was unemployed. He spent his days at a McDonald's with a group of middle-aged individuals who were also unemployed. When a janitor resigned one day, they all clamored for the position. The restaurant manager announced a monthly salary of five thousand RMB, leading to a bidding frenzy where each of them offered to work for less, four thousand RMB. Three thousand RMB, two thousand RMB, until finally, Sang's character volunteered to work for free. As a child, Molly didn't understand the scene, but now she does. None of the companies she interviewed with were suitable. Molly didn't tell any of her relatives or friends that she was unemployed. Only her husband knew. She still goes out early and comes back late every day. The library opens at nine o'clock, and she's usually the first to arrive. Leaving at five or six o'clock in the afternoon, she said. Sometimes when I go out for an interview, I go home directly afterwards. If I get home early, I tell my family that I just finished a meeting with a client. Molly is a native of Beijing, and she's been going to the Capital Library since she was a child. When I went to the library when I was younger, I would be surrounded by either students doing homework or retired people reading newspapers. The atmosphere was peaceful and quiet. Now, when I go to the library, basically 80% of them are young and middle-aged people. They were taking exams for certificates, postgraduate entrance exams, writing resumes, reading, and dazed. Some people just lay down on the table and fall asleep. They basically stayed there all day long, and you can see their complicated emotions. There was a 30-year-old man in the library who made an impression on her. He was restless and anxious, always looking for a job. Sometimes he would make phone calls in a low voice and ask if the other party was still hiring. He made a dozen calls each day. Even if he opened a book, he would look at the phone every two pages for fear of missing any message. Sometimes, when he received a call, he would rush out and leave everything on the table. In addition to seeking refuge in libraries, many young people are paying for jobs. Under the guise of enterprise consulting services, companies on platforms like Xiaohongshu openly sell job positions, creating a disturbing trend reminiscent of selling official positions in ancient China. This practice marks an era where everyone is desperate for a job. China's youth unemployment rate saw a six-month consecutive increase last year. Many are resorting to desperate measures. According to a report by Sina Tech, finding a stable and respectable job now often requires intermediary fees. However, these practices have sparked outrage. The Sina Tech report mentioned that a recent master's graduate originally intended to find a job at a local school in Changchun, Jilin Province. However, after multiple failed interviews, she ended up paying 140,000 yuan to a human resources company to buy an interview opportunity. This left her sighing. So interviews are useless. Paying money is what works. The investigation found that this company, Jilin Xingshui Human Resources, had already priced all job vacancies. For example, positions in large private enterprises like Kang Shufu were priced at around 8,000 to 10,000 yuan, while positions in state-owned enterprises like FAW Group and Hongqi were priced at around 200,000 yuan. Moreover. Positions in central state-owned enterprises with established quotas could be even priced at over 450,000 yuan. Staff members revealed that the usual process for paying for interviews involved signing a contract and paying half of the deposit up front. Then job seekers would directly enter the interview stage through this channel. As long as the basic conditions were met, they could smoothly take up the position. After officially starting work, they had to sign a three-year employment contract with the company. And then pay the remaining balance. However, the report mentioned that according to the contract, the full payment had to be made before the interview, and the company was not obliged to make any promises regarding the interview results. After this report was released, it caused a huge uproar online, but was quickly taken down. In today's mainland China, such news that goes against the official narrative is absolutely not allowed to appear in front of the public. The Chinese Communist Party's two sessions meetings are currently being held in Beijing. 
Against the backdrop of rising unemployment figures and economic downturn, Chinese leaders such as Xi Jinping and the official Chinese media are still singing praises for the Chinese economy while turning a blind eye to its problems. Many Chinese and foreign economists believe that, given the serious economic situation, where the annual growth rate of tax revenue far exceeds the growth rate of the national economy and personal income, the Chinese government should directly subsidize the people. This is considered the best and perhaps only way to kickstart the economy effectively. However, so far, the Chinese government has made no moves to give direct assistance, despite numerous calls for it. Many overseas observers and commentators have pointed out that this is mainly because the paramount leader of the CCP, Xi Jinping, opposes providing assistance to the people. A February report by Reuters highlighted a significant challenge facing Xi Jinping: how to address the concerns of a generation that has witnessed the slowest economic growth in almost 50 years. The Chinese Ministry of Human Resources stated in January that more efforts are needed to support employment in 2024, especially for young people. The report cited Zhou Yun, an assistant professor of sociology at the University of Michigan. She stated, despite some young people giving up on job hunting, their pessimism regarding the future warrants attention. She highlighted the formidable challenge young people face amidst the sluggish Chinese economy and a persistently tight labor market, characterized by social inequality, tightening political control, and bleak economic prospects.